This is part 58 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to load XML data from the server using jQuery get function. In part 57, we discussed how to load JSON data. We'll be modifying this example to load XML data. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. Notice here we are making a request to get help text.aspx page and we are sending help text key along with the request. And what we get from this page is JSON data because we are converting the help text object into a JSON format. Now what we want to do is inspect the request and response that we get back from this get help text.aspx page. To do that, we are going to use this tool Fiddler, which captures the traffic. So what I'm going to do is first remove all the traces here. And look at this. When this first name text box receives focus, we are sending some data and receiving some data from this get help text.aspx page. So we want to inspect both the request and response. And that will be captured in this Fiddler tool. Look at this. We are making a request to get help text.aspx page and to make that request we're using get function of the jQuery. What is this get function going to do? It's going to issue a get request. So if you notice the request here, here we have the request header. Look at this. The type of request is get and we are making that to get help text.aspx. So it's a get request and since we are sending some data to the server, in this case, help text key, by default, it will be appended to the URL as a query string. So get help text.aspx, question mark, and then we have this help text key. Now, since, you know, we, since the first name text box received focus, you know, the key value is first name. That's what is the request. Now, how does the response look like? To see the response, look at this here. We have a message saying response is encoded. Simply click on that and notice we are on the text view tab at the moment. And this is what we get back. We get a JSON object back. So if you want to inspect the request and response, you can use the Fiddler tool. But if you just want to see, you know, what is the response like, you can also use the browser, right? In the browser, we simply type this URL and we should get this response back. In fact, let's just try that. So instead of this HTML page one dot HTML, I'm going to type get help text dot ASPX question mark and help text key equals first name. Look at that. What we get back is a JSON object which contains key and text. Now let's go ahead and modify this example so it returns XML data. The first thing that we need to do is modify the code within gethelptext.aspx page. Right at the moment we are serializing this help text object, you know, that this function is returning to JSON. Now let's go ahead and serialize that to XML. To do that, we are going to use XML serializer class. And that class is present in system.xml dot serialization namespace. Now here the first thing I'm going to do is set the content type of the response to text slash XML. And then let's go ahead and create an instance of XML serializer class. Let's call the instance XML serializer equals new XML serializer. Now when we create an, an instance of this XML serializer class, you know, we have to specify the type of object that we want to serialize. The type of object that we want to serialize is help text. Right? And this object has got serialize method which is going to serialize the object to XML format. Now once it is serialized, where do you want to write it? You know, that's the first parameter. We want to write it to the output stream of the response object. So that's what I'm going to specify here. Response dot output stream. And then the actual object that we want to serialize. So this method get help text by key is going to return us the help text object, right? So I'm going to copy this and paste it right here. So this function returns the help text object that we want to serialize. And once it is serialized, we want to write it to the output stream of the response object. 
All right, so we can get rid of this code from here. All right, so let's go ahead and build the project. And look at this. Now, when we make a request to the same page, what we should get back is XML. Look at this. So here we are getting XML. So we have this help text, and within help text, we have got two elements, key and text. Key is first name text is the text associated with that help text key. Now we want to consume this XML from this page, HTML page one dot HTML. Okay, so instead of JSON, what we are going to be working with is XML. Okay, and this is the callback function. So what is this callback function going to get? It's going to get XML data, right? So what I'm going to do is wrap that XML using jQuery object. So I'm going to create a variable here. Let's call this jQuery XML equals dollar response. So we are wrapping the XML using the jQuery object. Since we have wrapped it using the jQuery wrapper, we can now use jQuery methods on this jQuery XML. So I'm going to create another variable here. Let's call this text element. So what I'm going to do here is within the XML, I'm going to find an XML element with name text. Now if you look at the XML that we get back, we have two elements, key and text. What I want to find is this text element, and I want to retrieve the text of that text element. Okay, so now this variable has the text element. All that is left is retrieve the text of the text element, right? So here I'm going to say text element, and then let's use the text function to get the text of that XML element. That's all there to it. So let's save all these changes. Let's go ahead and make a request to our HTML page one dot HTML and look at this now when the first name text box receives focus we still get the you know help text associated with that field. Now look at what we have in Fiddler. Here is the last request. So we are still making a get request and you know notice that the help text key is still appended to the URL. So that's the request. And if you look at the response what we are getting back is XML. Now here at the moment, we are only displaying the actual text associated with that key. If for some reason you want the key as well, then you know create another variable maybe, call it key element, and we can do the same thing. jQuery XML dot find what is the name of the XML element, key, and then we can use this, and then call the text function on that. So key element dot text and let's separate both of them using colon. Alright, so let's save the changes, reload this page, and now we should get both the key and the value, that is the actual help text. Thank you for listening and have a great day.